Hello everyone, today is 1st of July, now it's uh, 15 to 3 in the afternoon Moscow time, I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my second uh, update for today in which I'll share all the main news that uh, was reported by Russian media since this morning, since first update and uh, well hopefully you will find this video interesting and if so please click that like button and leave some commentary, just about anything, share video with you friends that will be very helpful and uh, of course uh, if you like my work uh, you can support with small donations through paypal boost your by subscribing to my patreon page all the links under this video in the description box and in the pinned um, comment um, and uh, let's talk about news of course and first of all by the way report of uh, russian defense ministry uh, about uh, yet another two settlements that were uh, liberated by Russian forces. So, a settlement of uh, Novo uh, Pakrovskaya in uh, DPR, on the sector of the front line, and also settlement of Stipova and Novosiolovka on Kupiansk direction, which is Kharkov region, are under full Russian control right now, according to Defense Ministry. Let me show you. Uh, where these settlements are located. So this is uh, this is Novo Pokrovskoye settlement on Avdevka direction in between uh, Umanska and uh, um, Acheretina. Uh, also, by the way, Russian forces right now are conducting offensive operations to, towards these settlements, uh, Evgenievka. Uh, and was hold and also towards progress uh, this is a latest report and when it comes uh, to another settlement that is liberated by russian forces uh, it's on kupiansk direction somewhere here that's it by the way stipova and Novosiolovka. in recent uh, few weeks russian forces established control over the ivanovka Kislyovka, Katalyarovka, and now we have reports about uh, liberation of Stipova and Novosiolovka. This uh, area here, this uh, settlement, if we zoom in, uh, we can see that it's uh, just a couple of, uh, couple of buildings, by the way. Maybe sometime in the past this was a relatively, relatively uh, populated area, but right now not so much so, but uh, territory, this area is definitely has some strategical meaning because if we take a look at the map, next hotspot, next stronghold of the Kyiv regime is uh, Sinkovka settlement. And battles for Sinkovka are taking place for many, many months, many, many months now. And I guess um, uh, we should expect now Russian offensive operations towards... Uh, towards Sinkovka and also towards um, Petropavlovka, this settlement here. Uh, road is open, basically, uh, to conduct such operations. And uh, this information is definitely confirmation of what I said uh, in the morning, in the morning's update, isn't it? That uh, this uh, Russian offensive operation in northern parts of Kharkov region to create a buffer zone already can be seen as a huge success because uh, with this operation russian side forced key regime to redeploy additional reinforcements reserves towards northern parts of kharkov region including from uh, other sectors of the front line and as, as a result of this uh, key regime's defense lines are struggling on many directions and uh, just uh, since the beginning of the, this russian operation to create a buffer zone probably already a dozen or more uh, settlements on other sectors of the front line become under full Russian control. So yes, interesting, interesting developments, of course. And dear friends, let me also notice that uh, you know today, under the today's first video, one member of our community was critical of me because uh, uh, he was not he or she. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't know uh, the gender of of the, of the member. But uh, I was criticized before because uh, on this map there is no English, uh, no signs in English. And unfortunately, nothing I can do about it. If you take a look at this, uh, 
here I already click on English so in idea uh, to, in theory this uh, map should be in English right now that's all I can do but uh, it's in Russian still and uh, I am not a developer of this uh, battle map this is some independent group I am just a paid subscriber uh, to have opportunity to share this uh, map to show you this map and the uh, areas where battles are taking place uh, and uh, I cannot really influence uh, anything when it comes to uh, when it comes to this map coloring of the map language on the map or, or anything else and uh, I apologize for this inconvenience that there are no English language signs on, on the map on the settlements but uh, I really cannot influence this so yes I apologize for that in inconvenience uh, it's not my fault that's that's what I can say there are some English language maps by the way battle maps uh, that are uh, pro-Ukrainian and I used to use those maps in past but uh, I'm no longer using those maps because sometimes it will take uh, weeks before they will update anything on the map uh, when it comes to Russian successful offensive operations and therefore those maps are just unusable really and I start using this map which is uh, much more accurate I will say okay let's uh, continue now with some other news uh, and uh, this is also interesting Tass News Agency and many other media outlets here in Russia are reporting about these uh, developments in Ukraine in Kyiv when a uh, regime there dec uh, declared that uh, they thwarted the uh, uh, coup d'etat sort of uh, total nonsense story I believe uh, some fake news but uh, Ukrainian media is talking about it uh, Russian media pays attention to it uh, Western media probably Western so-called media probably will pay attention to this topic and therefore I translated this news so that I will read it to be more precise so um, security service of Ukraine SBU terrorist organization claims that it detained activists who were preparing uh, to announce the removal of the country's military political leadership from power and then seize the building of their Verkhovna Rada which is parliament of uh, so-called parliament of uh, Kyiv regime according to their intelligence services uh, telegram channel activists were preparing provocations for uh, June 30 so yesterday should happen all that stuff but it didn't according to SBU uh, these uh, activists were planning to hold a public meeting in the central parts of Kiev at which uh, they would uh, announce the removal of the current leadership of the country from power then the activists allegedly plan to seize the rather building thus uh, blocking the work of parliament the SBU also claims that the activists planned to undermine the socio-political situation in Ukraine and were going to dismantle information about the events in Kyiv including through foreign uh, resources according to intelligence service the organizers attacked uh, representatives of the public organizations from Kiev, Dnepr, which is Dnepropetrovsk, and other regions uh, to implement the plan. The detainees were charged under the article on actions and calls for actions aimed to changing or overthrowing the constitutional order or seizing state power. They have already been uh, chosen as a preventive measure in the form of detention the number of detainees was not specified but the SBU added that the, they face up to 10 years in a prison with the confiscation of their properties or so some uh, BS story by the way seems like the uh, regime is really really desperate uh, to get some attention uh, and with attention some money also that's the usual story with Zelensky and his criminal associates and they come up with this uh, absolutely foolish story uh, that they you know arrested some uh, some uh, provocateurs that were planning to seize a uh, uh, building of the state rather and declare <laughs> and overthrow government and they are not specifying uh, number of uh, people that involved in this operation I mean to 
establish control over the state rather or the so-called parliament of Q regime and to neutralize uh, security forces that are present in that building you need uh, at least uh, several hundred well-armed you know uh, people at least several hundred right uh, but uh, what I saw, by the way, on internet, and I shared information about it uh, on my Telegram. Just this, by the way, several pictures, several pictures uh, that not really are that telling. I mean, who knows who this person is? Maybe this person is SBU asset, and acting is is if he is some sort of uh, activist or something. All this. I mean, what you're gonna learn from these uh, pictures, by the way? N nothing, absolutely nothing. Total fake news from the uh, regime. But um, yet again, uh, that's uh, that's the way they are operating nowadays. They need their desperately need some attention. They want more money, and they are bringing up this. Uh, uh, crazy stories i wouldn't be surprised at all if tomorrow or day after they will say that these people that they arrested allegedly had some connections with the russian security forces or stuff like that total nonsense by the way they are laughable they are laughable it's uh, so sad that these uh, criminals uh, managed to take over their ukraine and are terrorizing now ukrainian society and destroying not just social fabric there but uh, statehood of ukraine itself Anyways, let's continue. Task News Agency is reporting here that, uh, well, uh, legendary genius of the modern times, by the way, of the modern era. That's how this person going to be remembered by history. Foreign Minister of Germany, Annalena Baerbock, 360, stated that uh, uh, topest priority of the for the Germany in terms of national interests is uh, support of Ukraine. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. She's really something, isn't it? And let's uh, let's translate this news also. Uh, you know, let's translate this one also. It's gonna be interesting reading, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, that's gonna be enough. Uh, at least several sentences from Annalena. So, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock believes that Germany has no great national interest that supporting Ukraine. When you have such a foreign minister, by the way, that uh, says that support of uh, some uh, most corrupt or one of the most corrupt regimes in the world is a best net national interest of your country, you know that you are in trouble and your country is in trouble. I mean, 100 percent. There is no way around it, by the way. <laughs> this is just so clear, isn't it? Let's continue. She made this statement at the event of the Federal Academy for Security Pol Police uh, of Germany, Bucks, dedicated to the anniversary of the adoption of the first national security strategy in the country's history. The minister said uh, she was confused by discussions during which uh, support for Ukraine is uh, seen as a gesture of uh, charity and not as what it uh, actually is, an investment in uh, Germany's own security. In fact, there cannot be greater national interests, uh, she argued. Baerbock noted that uh, she was also confused by the reasoning of people who would like to live uh, in uh, security, but would not want uh, money to be spent on uh, ensuring it. Uh, their challenge for their decision makers is not the fact as if nothing is happening, but to make it clear uh, at all times that safety is uh, not something we take for granted but that we must uh, invest in our safety said the head of the ministry of foreign affairs and once again by the way she is uh, uh, of course genius of modern times uh, uh, she uh, and her policies and policies of current german government uh, effectively demilitarized uh, german armed forces and uh, for comparison by the way I mean, as, as a thought experiment I will argue that uh, Polish armed forces will decimate German army right now in just a couple of months' time. And I, I truly believe so. There is no German army in existence, by the way. There's some 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 bunch of people in military uniform that have no idea what the hell they are doing. 
you know that's german army today uh, and uh, and the uh, state of, of, of such a bad state of german army mainly is due to uh, lack of financing lack of understanding what german national interest really is uh, and it's definitely not ukraine by the way it's definitely not a key regime support 100 percent and uh, well it is what it is man germans army is demilitarized demoralized they lack military equipment and if they had some almost all of it almost all of it by the way a significant part of it for sure was transferred to key regime and she is arguing that this is in the best interests of germany uh, i don't know man i don't know in which world these people like Baerbock, uh, Merbock, Scholz, Boltz, and, and rest of these uh, this idiots are living, man. It's, it's crazy. It's a, such a shame, by the way, that Germany, that uh, has a, a great tradition uh, of, 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 of uh, generating top-level, world-level politicians, uh, are now in, in such a state that they have uh, these people in, in charge, at least formally. We all know that Washington is in charge in reality, but... I mean, still, at least formally, Baerbock is a foreign minister, man, and it's, it's such a shame. <laughs> and Scholz is a, is a chancellor. Okay, man. Okay. Unbelievable. Ria Novosti is reporting that, uh, well, Russian uh, press spokesman of the Russian president, Dmitry Peskov, reacted on uh, information that Zelensky started talking about peace. And uh, Peskov basically repeated what is uh, already known for uh, forever i will argue that russia is open for uh, true meaningful negotiations and uh, russia never uh, refused to participate in negotiations to resolve uh, this uh, crisis ukrainian crisis although by the way moscow was uh, very clear always that uh, negotiations has to be meaningful and uh, objective realities on the ground should be taken in account uh, in, during that those negotiations that's the only meaningful way to achieve something mm. uh, so uh, russia will pursue to achieve its goals by the way uh, still being open for negotiations uh, rian Oste's report also that uh, dmitry piskov reacted on information from belarus that the uh, regime is gathering huge number a relatively big number of its troops on the border with the belarus simultaneously by the way there are some significant number of nato troops on the western border with the belarus uh, and of course we know that belarus is bordering uh, not just ukraine but also poland uh, lithuania and uh, latvia and uh, yesterday information started circulating on internet from belarus that uh, there might be some uh, some disturbances on the borderline there might be some provocations and situation is uh, is uh, uh, demands attention obviously because a significant number of troops uh, um, from hostile states are are stationed on the borderline and dmitry piskov commented on this uh, information and uh, he said that kremlin is of course uh, informed about these uh, developments and uh, I mean, let me translate. Let me translate. Uh, I'm going to translate more often, really, uh, this uh, news. Uh, so Moscow considers the transfer of Ukrainian armed forces units to the Belarusian border a cause for concern, said the Russian president's press secretary, Dmitry Peskov. And then, quote, Belarus is a, a union state. We have a special formats of dialogue between uh, all relevant departments including special services or security services and our ministers of defense are in constant contact as uh, partners therefore of course uh, they uh, these are reasons uh, for concern not only for minsk but also moscow because we are truly allies and uh, partners so that's a comment from um, uh, kremlin about this m massing of the troops by key regime on the borderline with belarus and who knows by the way if uh, things continue to deteriorate uh, i will not say uh, anything about nato member states that are increasing number of their troops on the belarusian border but who knows maybe some preventive strikes will take place uh, 
on key regimes forces that are concentrated on the Belarusian border. That's possibility, obviously. Uh, but let's see, let's see, time will tell. And then, by the way, we have a statement from uh, uh, Stoltenberg, yes, Stoltenberg, Secretary General of NATO, who basically uh, claims that uh, China is uh, provoking the largest conflict in Europe since the Second World, World War. And the argument of Stoltenberg is that China is providing Russia with, uh, with some uh, uh, military assistance. Not Maybe not necessarily with weapon systems, but with their components that then used by Russian military industrial complex to build weapons. And uh, what is interesting and, uh, and quite ironic, really, this, is, uh, this was said by NATO Secretary General. NATO member states transferred to Q regime since the beginning of special military operation weapons and money for uh, up to 300 billion. And uh, this person, Jens Stoltenberg, is, is, is foolish enough to claim that it's China that provoking uh, any conflict in, in Europe. Uh, I don't know, man. Something is really wrong with these uh, people. They are living in parallel universe. They are totally out of touch with reality. And at this point, I really uh, find it difficult to believe that... Uh, uh, anybody worldwide, anybody with their uh, with their ability of complex thinking and their, and their, uh, anybody that is well informed can have any respect towards any statements that these morons, by the way, are making in charge of Western states or institutions. Majority of them are clearly morons, imbeciles. Uh, I just uneducated garbage by the way that's all really because uh, no decent human being can ever come up with such a statement when you know perfectly well that it's a western world collective west that is that provoked this conflict and now using ukraine as its proxy to fight russia and it's nato countries that provide key regime this this uh, uh, neo-nazis and the terrorists with the weapons and money for up to 300 billion for god's sake and they are blaming China for uh, having a trade and economical ties with Russia as a, some, some sort of provocation of the conflict in Europe. I mean, how stupid these people really are, this Stoltenberg and the rest of the garbage, man. And dear friends, when it comes to NATO, I want to share with you this information that I shared on my Telegram just uh, like an hour, two hours ago. So former NATO Secretary General, it seems like they have tradition in NATO to appoint some extremely stupid individuals uh, as a secretary generals because uh, let's go through this news here uh, admit ukraine to nato now that was stated by former nato secretary general rasmussen by the way so anders fog uh, rasmussen believes uh, ukraine should be admitted to their alliance immediately even despite being in the midst of uh, conflict claiming the west has parked Ukraine so to speak in the waiting room in the gray zone. Anders for, for Grasmussen said that the biggest threat to Kiev is a war fatigue in the West. He called the, the 2008 decision to deny Ukraine an ac action plan for uh, NATO so-called MEP uh, membership uh, uh, a mistake because of their uh, positions of the France and the Germany at the time. Well, I don't think US was really in favor of NATO becoming uh, Ukraine becoming NATO member states, and there were many other countries in in, in Europe that did not really. Uh, it's not just Germany or France, but other countries in Europe also were opposing uh, Ukraine to join NATO, and also uh, US, by the way, was not really uh, keen on that. Because they had a plan. They had a plan to use Ukraine as a proxy against Russia. Already in 2008, by the way. Because whatever geopolitical strategies Western ruling elites are implementing, those strategies are built not for a year, not for a two. Those strategies are uh, created for a decades. For decades. For sure. And uh, this person, by the way, this uh, imbecile was in charge of uh, NATO formally. He was a uh, secretary 
general of the NATO that calling now Ukraine to be admitted in NATO and then what? I mean, let's have a thought experiment and let's say that in Washington, in upcoming NATO summit, Ukraine will be uh, received in, in, in NATO. And what, what is going to happen next? Fifth article gonna go gonna come uh, in play, and uh, NATO gonna end up in full scale war with Russia. Do they really understand uh, or have any understanding what that means, full scale war with Russia? Do they understand that they would not survive? Maybe some idiots in uh, in uh, in uh, Western ruling elites, uh, Western political political elites, uh, really think that they may win nuclear war with Russia. But uh, I mean. At least some people among militaries, high-ranking militaries, have to understand, have to have this understanding that there can be no winners in a nuclear war. I don't know, man. These guys, I mean, sometimes one may wonder, are these people that are formally in charge of Western institutions and states, are these people who were found in some uh, psychiatric clinics or something? Why all of them are so crazy, man? Where is the common sense among uh, uh, those people? I mean, <sighs> I don't know, man. Some idiots, really, man. Ria knows this report that, uh, well, uh, if US had not enough bases, by the way, they will have another 15 now in Finland. Uh, or at least uh, Finnish government, Helsinki, is very keen to invite US militaries and they will allow. Uh, Pentagon to have access to at least 15 Finnish bases, military bases. Um, okay, okay, and then, uh, then of course, uh, Jens Stoltenberg will come out and say that uh, it's uh, it's uh, aliens that are provoking this conflict. NATO has nothing to do with it, you know, absolutely nothing. Okay, man. So yes, U.S. taxpayers should get ready. I mean, they're gonna pay for. Uh, I mean, for. 10, 15, 20 billion more for their uh, corrupt uh, Pentagon and their plans to uh, have access to another 15 bases in Finland this time. Okay, man. Uh, Arabic news agency is reporting that, um, well, Russian ship uh, builders, Russian shipyards that are building military, military uh, warships. Uh, made decision to uh, conduct some changes in design of their modern uh, vessels, modern warships, based on their experience of uh, a special military operation and their active use, active deployment on the, on the zone of battlefields, uh, unmanned vehicles, aerial or naval, and all the Russian, all the Russian uh, vessels, future uh, warships will be equipped with additional protection from the drones, from aerial drones and their uh, naval drones. And I guess some changes will be done uh, on current Russian warships also to equip them with additional means of uh, protection. Because of course, of course, uh, uh, drones are game changers, uh, big time. And uh, there is no way one can argue with that. Uh, drones definitely are playing a crucial role in modern uh, warfare. And navies have to adapt, undoubtedly. Artists report, by the way, that Biden's family backs his uh, re-election bid. This was reported initially by CNN. Their family of the U.S. President Joe Biden has uh, urged him not to end his uh, campaign for re-election, re despite their widespread disappointment following his debate against the Republican challenger Donald Trump. CNN has reported, okay, maybe his family uh, or maybe some groups, let's say, among Democrats still want Biden to run as a president, but it seems uh, to me that decision uh, already been made among uh, Democrats, uh, among uh, political or among Democrat establishment, and uh, most likely Biden will be removed because uh, he's just physically not capable, capable of playing this role. We all understand that he's not making no decisions. Some other people do this. Uh, 
uh, that uh, not even known to the public and definitely was not uh, elected by nobody. But uh, Biden is not even capable to act as a president. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, uh, I guess some other candidate will be chosen to be talking head of the neolibs deep state or uh, intelligence community of us whoever is in charge uh, in washington in reality let's continue and uh, well uh, prime minister of armenia by the way cia asset uh, uh, pashinyan made statement that uh, he is against nikol pashinyan made a statement that he is against uh, conducting referendum in a country in armenia about her uh, joining eu and his explanation for now is that people may start asking questions uh, if referendum will be conducted and uh, uh, answers people may don't like answers <laughs> so therefore he, he thinks uh, it's not yet time for armenia to conduct referendum about joining eu okay okay they need more time to uh, to further intensify their propaganda to brainwash people in armenia as much as possible so that no one will ask or almost nobody will ask any questions and they will uh, vote uh, in any direction they are directed to uh, that's what usually happens uh, whenever country becomes a client state of the uh, washington and uh, i guess uh, armenia not going to be any different yes there are some protests in armenia some some parts of the public in armenia are waking up and realizing how devastating for for Armenian people, Pashinyan's government uh, uh, is, but uh, too little, too late. I'm afraid, uh, too little, too late. They should never ever allow Western assets to take over Armenia, because uh, once they did it, uh, it's gonna be extremely hard to re rec to reclaim their own country, and they are struggling now with this. Also, by the way, interesting reports from Vzgliad newspaper, and this report is based on Georgian media, that uh, uh, President of Georgia, also asset of CIA, Salome Zurabishvili, is, uh, has a plan to not recognize upcoming in uh, 26th of October parliamentary elections in Georgia and to create political crisis, basically to lay down ground, ground for regime change in Georgia. Uh, you know, I, I spoke many times that uh, there will be parliamentary or should be parliamentary uh, elections uh, in autumn and the uh, western ruling class may use uh, this uh, time frame this pay period to destabilize georgia once again and to conduct regime change and we all know that during this so-called colored revolutions cia and their assets usually are, are using elections because those elections are then not recognized and uh, and calls began to conduct regime change and it seems like that uh, uh, georgian tv tv station imedi uh, had some inside information about uh, some works in in the circle of the zurabishvili and they reported they reported that the um, zurabishvili plans to create a political crisis in the country by not recognizing results of the elections and uh, as i said man that's going to be definitely foundation for yet another attempt by washington by western ruling class uh, the secret services and assets in georgia to destabilize country conduct regime change and then use georgia as a uh, as a weapon against russia kind of second front to sacrifice georgia basically as they did with ukraine uh, but well government is informed media is informed public is informed in georgia so they should take all the necessary measures to not allow this uh, to happen you know they should protect uh, stability in the country and the uh, best interests of the public which is uh, exactly the stability and peace uh, erbeka news agency is reporting that boeing by the way instead of this company being uh, divided in several so that quality control will increase exactly opposite is happening in us uh, i mean uh, there the clearly is some systematic problem in us institutional problems because uh, for whatever reason exactly opposite is uh, being done and boeing 
uh, on the background this, of this huge crisis that this company is, uh, Boeing purchased uh, another a giant in the, uh, another business, by the way, Spirit Aerosystems company, which is providing some parts for Boeing. And uh, this deal was closed and it, it cost uh, about 8.3 billion dollars. Uh, so, and the explanation is that by purchasing this company that used to be part of Boeing before, but then bake off, uh, well, purchasing this company again will increase uh, quality control in Boeing, which is nonsense, by the way, which is absolute nonsense. Boeing should be divided because this company cannot survive as it is right now. It just cannot survive. It's doomed to fail. Uh, but seems like uh, seems like uh, the so CEOs uh, and, and and big bosses in, in Boeing they just don't really care why they are receiving millions and millions in, in paychecks. By the way, what are they doing really? How they deserve this money? By destroying Boeing, reputation of this company, and uh, and they did, isn't it? They did, and uh, Boeing is now I don't know. Man. I'm telling you, if I'm gonna fly somewhere, and if there is choice to fly on Russian airplane, uh, Airbus or Boeing, I will definitely choose Russian or Airbus. But not Boeing, man. <laughs> Thanks. No. Uh, anyways, let's uh, continue. TAS News Agency is reporting about uh, studies conducted by Bloomberg, according to which Russian billionaires get richer for another 28 billion um, since the beginning of this year. So I guess before end of this year, they will make another 28 billion or something like that. So overall, Russian billionaires will become richer for another like 50 billion as a, as a result of this year. Okay, I have nothing against the billionaires, by the way. If they are doing their business uh, according to law, if they are paying their taxes, uh, good for them. Good for them. And uh, what is also important now, when there is a sanctions war uh, declared on Russia by Collective West, uh, when uh, Western ruling class shut down the border for many, many Russian billionaires and multimillionaires, uh, they're going to invest uh, more heavily in Russia. Before, they were quite often investing in the West. But now, they're going to invest in Russia, in Russian economy. And that's good, but in Russian economy, in economies of their friendly nations with Russia, because that's what uh, money does, isn't it? You're, you're not going to stockpile these billions and billions. So you're you're going to invest it in something, isn't it? So, yes, good news. 28 billion more for Russian billionaires. And hopefully they will invest in Russian economy at least half of this sum, which will create additional jobs, which will create additional uh, opportunities uh, and will benefit uh, society and, uh, and the country itself. And uh, finally, by the way, I will end this update on this news that in the Yakutia region of the Russian Federation in the Far East, the emergency situation is declared because of the wildfires. Unfortunately, right now there is 107 different uh, epicenters of the wildfire in the, in the forest. And uh, um, overall, overall uh, fires are now raging on 331,000 hectares uh, which is uh, huge of course which is a uh, huge of course uh, uh, but still i mean if you take in account ra size of russia uh, it may don't uh, sound as dramatic as uh, as as numbers may suggest unfortunately wildfires are seasonal like you know seasonal events uh, natural events uh, one may say Unfortunately, there is always every summer there is wildfires, not just in Russia, but in, in Canada, in, uh, in all the other countries with, with the huge masses of uh, forest, forestry. And uh, this year is not going to be exception. Uh, recently, I also reported about wildfires, if you remember. And uh, at that time, even though, of course, 300 hectares, uh, 300,000 hectares are sounds uh, immense, uh, uh, 
but uh, according to statistics, uh, uh, at that time when I was reporting previously about wildfires, area was significantly less. Area that was under fire was significantly less than in previous year, in 2023. And maybe it's, it is the case uh, until now also. Unfortunately, in this news, uh, there is no such detailed uh, information on that. So yes, emergency situation in Yakutia region and of course uh, firefighters and uh, and everybody who supposed to be involved in this uh, fight against uh, wildfire is involved and hopefully those fires will be extinguished. So this is it by the way for now. Wow, quite long update still, isn't, uh, isn't it? 40 minutes. I make this second update uh, to to make sure that tomorrow's first update will be shorter uh, but i didn't expect this update to be this long uh, hopefully you will find it uh, informative interesting useful and if so please click that like button and uh, leave some commentary and dear friend if you did not see uh, my first update today check that one also uh, let's let's deal with the algorithm somehow this immensely aggressive algorithm and uh, uh, likes and comments also by the way are only way that we can deal with their shadow ban that my channel is in or or with the algorithm itself and if you find my work uh, uh, if you like my work if you find uh, my channels interesting useful informative uh, please consider to support with small donations through a uh, paypal boosty or by subscribing to my patreon page all the links under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment and when it comes to patreon uh, i will say for for our patreon uh, community that uh, unfortunately yesterday i was unable to publish that video about uh, inflation and the prices uh, here in russia because i was not happy with the quality of the video so today uh, in in couple of hours time i will i will make another video i will go to some of the supermarkets here and uh, i will make um, uh, i already have a uh, number of items that i want to check prices on uh, and every every month once i will go through this uh, basic food basket uh, bucket basically basic food bucket and uh, i will check prices on similar on same items months after months sir, and we can have a good understanding about inflation uh, so so yes hopefully you know this uh, this uh, program about inflation will will be also interesting to to community okay that's been that's been said uh, um, i will end now have a great day and take care